Hello, my name is Austin Belzer, and welcome back to episode 8 of the Austin B Media Podcast, a short-form podcast discussing movies, video games, technology, TV, music, and much more. But before we get into any of that, uh, I want to set some time aside to thank some of my patrons who make all of this possible. Uh, first, that would be uh, Thomas from Judge from Moviesreal.net and The Fly, apparently. Um, sorry for the video people, but you're going to see a fly. Um, but yeah, Thomas Stone of Judge, one of my first patrons. So thank you, uh, Thomas. Uh, then Shane Kanto, um, y- you can check him out on his, on pretty much everywhere as, as the Wasteland Reviewer on Sith Pop. Uh, I think he's on, uh, a few others, um, a few other channels he's on. Um, then Joseph Davis, he's also on Sif Pop. Uh, then David Walters and Bula Bula, Matthew Simpson of Awesome Friday. Uh, like I said last week, you can check um, check out my uh, clip from the po- from the MCU podcast I I did with them, um, or that I recorded for the Awesome Friday podcast. Um, and go check out the Awesome Friday podcast. It, it sounds like a I don't have time to check it out, but. Um, but I'm sure it's a good uh, podcast. Um, and then Tom Blackburn, uh, Eli- Elia, sorry if I mispronounced that, would be Stevenson and Ava. Thank you so much. You keep the lights on, uh, but not that light, light off because backlighting sucks. So um, anyhow, let's get into the show. Um, oh, first, before we get into the show. Uh, if you'd like to become a patron or would just like to support me in any other way, um, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash austinbmedia or go to austinbmedia slash support uh, for more information. It'll give you the layout of the tiers. It will um, uh, it, it, it will give you everything. All, the donation page to buy me a coffee. I recently updated this so it's all concise language. So, um, yeah, let's talk about some movies. Um, let's see, what are we talking about? Uh, let's start with Vengeance. Um, as of yet, I have not recorded my review, uh, but it'll be up by the time this is up, but this is B.J. Novak's directorial debut. Um, I did not like this as much as the internet seems to have liked this movie. Um, for those who don't know, Vengeance is is about, uh, Ben, uh, B.J. Novak plays this uh, podcast producer named Ben. Uh, his... His hookup date thing, his, his his girl he's been hooking up with, Abilene, dies. Uh, actually, gets supposedly get murdered, um, and he travels to Texas to go uh, investigate her murder. Um, and then it kind of goes off from there. It goes off the rail, rails from there. Um, yeah. So it, it it's got a great concept. It's got um, great acting in it. Uh, Ashton Kutcher is really great in it. Um, I think Boyd Holbrook is doing something really unique with um, with um, his character Ty Shaw. Um, I don't think we ever see him in a in, in a role as fun as this, um, which is kind of um, fascinating um, because he's kind of known for his more menacing roles, uh, and Ashton Kutcher is kind of known for his more humor humorous roles, and he kind of gets to play. Around with that, um, he's, I, I won't say too much about him, uh, just because I don't know what's in the synopsis, um, but yeah, I, I really liked what he did in, in the um, movie. Um, B.J. Novak, I think, is ultimately, um, I wouldn't say failure, um, but I would say um, that it, it, it it's like a movie that came out 10 or 15 years ago. Um, it reminds me a lot of Detachment, the Adrian Brody movie from the early 2010s. Um, gosh, was that 10 years ago? Um, I think it came out 2010, 2011, something like that. Um, and that's, it, it doesn't have a lot of substance. It's just kind of like, hey, wouldn't, here's this concept and we're just going to run with it. So if you're in the mood for that kind of movie, I, I, I think Vengeance will be for you. Um, 
But if you're not, um, then I would say maybe, um, may maybe wait till this comes to VOD. Um, I don't think this is something you should rush out and see um, just off of my experience with it, but I don't think that should color uh, your experience with it because mainly I'm in the minority here. Same, th same way as I, I was in the minority for not okay, which we'll talk about here soon. Um, but yeah, it, it just um, it, it just didn't work for me. Um, I'll, I'll I'll say more when I get to my uh, review in my review. Obviously, I'll, I'll probably write 1,500 words about it. Um, but yeah, I I, I, um, I it, it just wasn't my it wasn't for me, but it wasn't that. Um, same, same with a love song. Uh, this is from Bleecker Street. Uh, it's got Dale Dickey, um, in the main role. Uh, she, she's just this, um, person who lives in her van and gosh, it's been so long, um, since I've seen this. Well, I, I say so long, it's been a, about two months or a, a month or two, um, since I've seen this. I saw it at Tribeca 2022. And I'll have a review of, of this out soon. Um, I've just been busy with other reviews. Um, and I'll be pretty busy all this week. But anyways, um, let's see. It it just, like Vengeance, I, it has a good concept. It, it's, it's a slice of life movie um, where a lot of the movie is set in RV. And if you're not for that, I don't think you'll enjoy this kind of movie. Um, but if you are for that, um, I think you'll like this movie. That's really all I can say other than what the movie is actually about, which I feel like would be spoiling uh, some of it. Um, because I don't know how much is in the synopsis, as how much uh, Bleecker Street has an announced uh, about it. But, um, but yeah, Dale Dickey gives a great performance. Um, but it ju it just wasn't for me. It just wasn't for me at all. Um, Medusa. Um, I saw this back at AFI Fest uh, last year, um, and I'll have a review of that. Obvi obviously, um, might be a while um, because I'm uh, I'm waiting for a a, a certain um, email to hit my inbox um, today um, as I'm recording this, um, but. Let's see. Um, it, it, it's 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 a foreign film about it's fr uh, oh um, let me see how much I remember. I know it's being distributed by Music Box Films. I know that, um, but it's basically a mo uh, like it. It is basically a modern day. Um, I wouldn't want to say Hamlet. I, I, I'm trying not to give too much away. Um, but basically, um, it, it's about a group of girls that starts terrorizing terrorizing anyone who's seen it as unpure. Uh, and it's a very um, interesting social commentary piece, but not much other than that. Um, so, yeah... I, I, it, it, there's not much to it. Um, I don't think I'll rate it very high. Um, same thing with the love song and vengeance. I don't think I'll. Well, I think I'll. I, I know what I'm rating vengeance, and I know what I'm ra rating a love song, and they're in the same range. But Medusa would be lower than that. I'm trying not to give away my score, um, but yeah, I, ju I, I just think. There have been better movies I've seen on social commentary, which brings me to Not Okay. Uh, Zoe Dutch uh, stars in this film by Quinn Shepard. Uh, it's her second uh, film. Um, and I, I loved it. I loved the av ever loving. Uh, I, I, I love this movie. Um, it, it's on Hulu right now. Um, it's Zoe Dutch, uh, her character, uh, Danny Sanders. Uh, has no friends, has no Instagram following, and decides to fake a trip to Paris. Um, and then stuff happens in Paris, and then 
She becomes a kind of social media advocate. Um, also, by the way, I have a review, commentary, video review, um, written review, all that will be linked. Um, but yeah, I, I, um, I love this because of how much it leans into how cringeworthy it is and how it lets um, the characters be horrible people. How it lets um, Dylan O'Brien's character uh, lets him be the um, the airhead. Uh, I'm trying to keep this PG so that iTunes doesn't uh, mark me uh, as explicit. Uh, mark the episode as explicit, um, but it, it lets him be that. Um, it lets uh, Zoe Dutch's character Danny. Um, be a cringeworthy character. It lets um, Mia Isaac, who I saw in Don't Make Me Go, I think it, uh, I, I talked about Don't Make Me Go in one of the other uh, podcast episodes. I think episode uh, five, if I had to recall off the top of my head. I'll link it uh, in a YouTube card here. There, where my, my finger cannot be seen. Um, and, but, um, but yeah, I... I um, Mia Isaac's great in this, too. Um, It lets her just be... It lets everyone have flaws, and I think that's such a unique thing to see because I think... I I think modern movies sometimes think that they need to have a message behind every single character. Um, As we'll see with one of the reviews, I can't reveal uh, yet. Uh, I can't talk about it yet. Um... But super secret, um, as of this recording, at least. Um, but yeah, I I, um, I I love how much they, they uh, to use a quote from a, uh, a a TV show, The West Wing, which I haven't seen, by the way. I I, I should put that on my binge list, um, my list of shame, as it were, um, which I'll talk to patrons about here on next Monday about, um, by the way, check out Behind the Curtain. Um, anyways, um, yeah, just sit there in your wrong I, I, I think that's such a pertinent quote to this movie because it lets the s- characters sit in their, there in their wrongness, uh, so to speak. Um, it doesn't, it, but it doesn't let them off the hook either. It allows you to sympathize on, with every character, even though they're making dumb decisions. Um, Twitter's having a field day with it. They love it. Um, and I love it. I, um, as you'll see in my reviews, I rated it 5 out of 5, which is a, um, a controversial score um, because I don't think people like to rate um, things 5 out of 5. So, or 10 out of 10, or 100 out of 100, so A+, plus, or whatever grade scale you use. I think it's interesting that we don't use that scale anymore but anyhow those are my thoughts on movies this week um let's get to let's see what what do we want to talk about let's talk about video games real quick because i did play some video games um i did play a little bit more of ghost recon future soldier i think a lot of my criticism still stands for that um for that game um especially in a segment i played recently uh, I haven't gone, gotten back to it, but there's this... I, I, I've uh, gotten past the airstrip um, mission that seems kind of punitive where it, wants you, where it wants you to not alert things, and then five minutes later, your, your, the alert is lifted, and you can just shoot people with an SMG and no re- repercussions whatsoever, other than, oh, hey... It, the game might get a little harder. You know, like Ghost Recon Advanced Warfare? So, um, and I think in those moments where you're in a firefight, or strangely enough, um, where the game shines, surprisingly. I think the... <clears throat> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Um, where the um, 
where the um, game kind of fails in the sniping section where you, that you can pick people off is that um, it, it, it becomes tedious after a while. Um, it, it, and while Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter, um, that was tedious, but in a good way. Um, you felt like you were rewarded for planning out um, y your strategy. Um, and in uh, Future Soldier, um, that's not the case. It's just, oh, hey, um, just because um, it, it only punishes you when, you know, you can't alert somebody to some, something. Uh, but that's about it. Um, but getting back to what I said, the best part of it that makes it feel like Advanced Warfighter is... Um, because it actually feels like you're in the middle of a firefight um, when you're actually in a firefight um, in this game. Um, I know that sometimes doesn't make sense, but um, y even on um, the quote-unquote normal uh, uh, difficulty, I'm on veteran difficulty, which I think was... I I'm pretty sure that was the normal di difficulty, so... I, I don't know why they'd call it veteran difficulty, but anyhow. Um, it, it, um, it, it, Ghost Recon Future Soldier, it, it, it feels better when you're in a firefight because you feel pinned down, you don't know what to do, um, you have to rely on your squad mates for help uh, in case you get pinned down. Um, you're required to manage... Your, your shots, manage your flanks, and really keep track of everything. And I think that's um, so cool and feels exactly like what Advanced Warfighter was, um, at least what I remember playing um, of it. Um, however, that is de directly contrasted um, by a, a mission uh, later when, you're, when you get in a Jeep and start... Uh, gunning down people in a, with a minigun, and the um, vehicles start exploding, and it just doesn't make any sense. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I think if I had to review it, I think I'd know where I'd stand um, on, on, on it. Um, I think it'd be pretty low on, on my video game review scale, uh, obviously on star scale. Um, maybe I'll record spoiler commentary, but... Or, or something like that, but it, it, it's not worth what I paid for it. I'll just say that. Um, I, I, I didn't get into Pro Skater 1 and 2 this weekend, but I did get into a lot of TV, a lot of TV um, this weekend, or, or this week. Yeah, no, this weekend. Um, I think it actually would be more accurate. Um, but um, let's, so let's talk about For All Mankind, Episode 8 of Season 3. Um... You already know my thoughts on the overall season at large. We're uh, two episodes away. Um, in fact, this week's episode will be episode nine, which will be the penultimate episode, I believe, of season three. Um, so you already know many, many, many of my thoughts on season three. Uh, it's 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 focus on Danny, um, particularly uh, this week. Um, Actually, scratch that on Danny this week, but um, I'll get to him later. Um, but I, I just think that what, whatever... I just think For All Mankind Season 3 is the what most wasted opportunity I've seen in all of television. Um, when you when I ended season two of For All Mankind, there was this promise of, "Hey, we're gonna get to Mars," and and then in, when we started season three, um, I listened to the official podcast uh, up until I think episode three or four or something like that, um, and I was just listening, and they're like, the showrunner, I think uh, Ron Moore, I believe his name is. Uh, came on and was like, yeah, it's not just Mars, it's other things too. And I have yet to see any evidence of anything beyond Mars. 
I mean, I know I've seen, um, oh goodness, uh, a description for this week's episode, episode nine, uh, that is m- more about the larger uh, conflict going on in season three. But um, but I, I, I just think, man, I, it, it's, a, it's such a bad season of television compared to season two. I, I, I just don't like it. Um, and then in this episode, we're dealing with the ramifications of what ha- happened uh, last week. And, but we also don't at the same time. I've never seen a show say, hey, let's deal deal with the ramifications of what happened last week and then not deal with the ramifications of what happened last week. Um, I don't know if they're they're trying to delay the ramifications until the the season ends, and that can be the setup for season four. But all I know is it's not worse than Stranger Things 4. no, not a lot can be worse than that. Um, but I, I just think that for all my guys, season three so far has just been kind of a soap opera at this point. Um, and I know I've watched soap operas like uh, Days of Our Lives, Young and the Restless, Bold and the Beautiful. Or is it Bold and Beautiful? Bold and the Beautiful? I, I can't recall. But... Um, all, I watched all those with my dad. So I, I know what soap operas feel like. And um, this feels like that, except for much, much stupider. Um, like, at least with for, uh, Days of Our Lives, you could kind of be like, oh, how did he come back to life? And you could be like, oh, because of X, Y, and Z. But for all mankind, it's just like, well, because we said so. And that's kind of a cheap cop out. Um, but I'm not looking forward to this week's episode unless it really deals with um, Danny. Um, again, not, not getting into spoilers. Um, but um, I just I, I just think that it, this is a Game of Thrones season seven um, kind of season. Um, and I'm not here for it. Anyways, um, a season three that I do like is High School Musical, the musical, the series. Yes, I know that's a mouthful. Um, as you know, I've already written my review, uh, and I've recorded my video uh, review. Uh, I've done both commentaries, um, and I'll have a spoiler discussion this week um, when the episode comes out, I think. Uh, when the second episode comes out, um, discussing some spoiler thoughts about it. But, um, yeah, so I'm glad to finally be able to talk about this. Uh, I, I think for, uh, not, for not for all mankind, uh, High School Musical Musical Series Season 3, I feel like it's such a breath of fresh air. You're probably going to hear me say this a lot. Um, but after Season 2... Which, um, there's a lot of parallels for all man- with For All Mankind, except for flip flop them. For All Mankind Season 3 is like High School Musical, the musical, the series Season 2. Interesting. Um, but yeah, this season is, feels like the actors are finally having fun. Um, I don't know if that's because certain people are separated from one another. Um, and I'm sorry if you can hear that. I live on a lake, boats are going to be revving their engines. So, sorry about that. Um, it's just an unavoidable uh, situation. But the songs are great. Um, there's one or two that I don't like. Um, and I'll avoid talking about them just in, just in case um, people haven't seen it by the time they watch this ep- uh, podcast or listen to it. Um, but I, the songs are great. I, I like that the, the setting kind of forces these characters out of the shell. Um, and forces them into a situation where they're not, not comfortable. Um, some things I could live without. Um, mainly, I, I, I think the decision for Seb, uh, Big Red, and a few other characters uh, getting, 
getting shuffled off screen in in, in favor of these uh, newer characters. Um, I, I I think is a bit of a wrong move, but I think it'll play out. I think it'll play out uh, well because um, I guess spoilers for last season. Uh, Seb works on, well, I guess no spoilers for Seb, because we already, I, anyways, um, Seb, um, we, we, we know his deal, um, we know what's up there, um, and with, um, we, we, we know he has to live on the farm, so he might not want to go to, uh, Camp Shallow Lake, but we, we can make up our own headcanon there. But with and with Big Red, he's got the pizza place to run, and it's summer, and so the pizza place is gonna be busier than ever. Um, so I can make that up, but like me, and I can make up the reasons behind Nini not um, not being a, a series regular and being a guest character or a recurring character. I mean, um, but I just think overall this season gels a lot better uh, together. Um, because I think, all in all, um, I think Tim Federley, the showrunner and sh uh, creator, I believe, um, has finally figured out what made season one so special and gotten back to it, um, which I think was sorely, sorely needed after season two, um, especially like with some of the stuff that happens in ep this episode, first episode. Um, I, I, I think it was nice to have that change of pace. I won't go into spoilers, but if you've seen the first episode, you know who I'm talking about. Um, but the new characters are great. Uh, Jet's great. Um, uh, Maddox is great. Um, I can't really think anything else other than that. I hope to be able to cover it um, in advance. I just sent the email today to Disney. Um, so we'll see. Um, We'll see if I can still cover them so far in advance. Um, but I hope you've been liking the uh, coverage. So, anyways, uh, with that, let's get in, let's get into what, we recently, what I recently posted. A whole lot of vengeance reviews and uh, also commentary. Uh, the uh, second commentary for season three of High School Musical the Musical series is up. Uh, my not okay written and video review is up, as well as audio commentary. Behind the Curtain episode 3 is up, um, and I'm sure there's more, but I can't talk about them as of this uh, episode airing for patrons, so, um, so you, it'll just have to be a surprise. I'll have to edit the show notes later, but um, that's been the Austin B Media Podcast. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, uh, and if you're uh, watching this on Spotify or iTunes, uh, or listening to it on Spotify or iTunes. Make sure to give me a uh, five star on iTunes. I know that uh, gets gets uh, me up there in the traffic, so I'd be much uh, I'd be uh, that'd be greatly appreciated. Um, as well as just you know maybe hitting the subscribe uh, icon. I, I, I think or following. I, I believe that's what we call on Spotify. But until next week, this is Austin Bubbles signing off. Mm -hmm.